Okay team, 2023 is rapidly coming to its end and that as always means it is once again time for my yearly roundup of the best Android apps. Now for context, over the course of this year, I've featured around 150 different applications on my channel, but for this video, I've picked just 20, all of which are what I consider to be the best of the best. So without further ado, here are my top 20 Android apps for 2023. And kicking off the list today is my very own application shelf, which got a feature all the way back in January of this year. For those who haven't heard of it, this is an app designed to showcase not only every single app that I've ever featured on the channel in one easy to navigate interface, but it also lets users add their own app recommendations, meaning it's essentially a continually updated hub of curated applications. And you can use it at any time if you're on the lookout for some new apps. There's a heap of additional fun features built in as well, including a monthly review challenge, the ability to create app shelves and then quickly add them to your home screen, plus a heap more. Next up is Flash Dim, and with the recent release of Android 14, I was hoping Google would have finally added a system level way for users to adjust the intensity of the flashlight, but alas, they haven't. And so Flash Dim is still my go-to solution. You get a few preset levels on the side here to quickly toggle between. We can also use this slider for full granular control, but I think my favorite feature is that it lets you add a quick settings tile that can be linked to a set level. And this is a feature that I use all the time. Pixel Launcher Mods is another app that I featured at the start of the year. And given that we still can't hide either the at a glance or search bar widgets with the stock Pixel Launcher, this is an app that I'm now actually actively using on my Pixel 8 Pro. On top of being able to hide both of those widgets, this module also lets you use third-party icon packs. It lets you hide apps from the app drawer, and there's even a few more features on top of those. But in short, that's basically how I'm able to pull off this home screen configuration using the stock Pixel Launcher. Your phone does need to have root access unlocked, so keep that in mind, but it's well worth it if it does. Then there's Snipped, and this is a podcasting app that I featured earlier in the year that I now use almost every single day. Not only does it offer all of the same features that you can find in just about any podcasting app, including customizable skip forward and back durations, but it does so in what is perhaps the nicest design and interface that I've ever come across in terms of podcasting apps. Plus, it also supports cross-platform syncing, which is a must-have feature for me. System UI Tuner is an app that I still install on every phone that I use, though how much I use it largely depends on the phone. But as the name so helpfully indicates, this is an app that unlocks a bunch of system level mods for your phone. So on top of hiding icons in your phone's status bar, which is what I primarily use it for, you can also use this app to disable the system safe audio warning. You can use it to customize various UI system sounds. You can even set custom device lock timeout durations or set which radios should be disabled when toggling your system airplane mode. Plus, there's a huge amount of tweaks on top of those as well. Just keep in mind that the app does need ADB permissions to be granted. Plus, some of the tweaks will only work on certain devices. And then there's a newer, which is perhaps one of my favorite apps I've ever featured in terms of an app's animations. Plus its functionality is amazing as well. And although there was a brief period where the app got removed from the Play Store, it's back and better than ever. Probably the app's best feature in terms of functionality is that it lets you perform a bunch of different batch actions for groups of selected apps. But then, like I said, the design and fluidity of the entire interface is just on another level worth trying it for just that aspect alone. Now, I'm more of a tape measure guy, but that doesn't mean that I'm not still super impressed to this day by the app Measure. And that's because it uses your phone's camera and motion sensors to measure spaces super quickly. It works really well and is pretty dang accurate to go with, so a very handy app when you're in a pinch. An app I still use all the time though is Monitor Plus. If you haven't heard of it, this is an app that connects to Sony mirrorless cameras via Wi-Fi, and in doing so, transforms your phone or tablet into fully-fledged wireless professional camera monitors. The amount of features it packs in is staggering, and just for reference, I now use this app several times a week, and it has been a serious game changer for my workflow. Another app I've used all the time since featuring it is Tap Scroll, which essentially emulates that iOS feature that lets you tap your status bar to quickly scroll to the top of any given page. It works really well and is just so intuitive. Plus it even lets you add additional gestures and actions if you like, which is really cool. Now, whilst I don't actively use the Nokia 1280 launcher app, 
I still remember when I first stumbled upon it and just how many memories came flooding back to me as a result. They've honestly thought about pretty much everything with this app, and despite running on a modern day smartphone, it genuinely looks and feels very authentic. Unfortunately, they are still yet to add support for this classic snake game, which has been coming soon for six months now, so who knows if it'll ever get added. But then to bring us back into modern times, Standby was a really cool app that I showcased that beautifully emulates that standby mode feature that was released with iOS 17. I don't personally use this app right now, but the speed at which the developer brought this app out whilst ensuring that it looked as authentic as it did at the same time still impresses me to this day. And I can definitely see myself using it at some point in the future, should I be in the market for something a little more creative than Android's stock always on display. All right, before we press on, just wanted to take a moment to thank today's video sponsor, Superhuman, which is by far the fastest email experience ever made, now also available on Android. So with Superhuman, you'll be able to power through emails twice as fast, whilst also being more responsive to the emails that matter most. It's designed for lightning fast navigation using keyboard shortcuts, but then on top of that, it comes packed with a huge range of productivity boosting features. There's the split inbox system, which allows you to zero in on critical emails. You've also got the ability to snooze and set reminders for emails, and you can even take advantage of their incredible snippets tool, which lets you insert automated phrases, paragraphs, or even entire emails if you like, with just a few keystrokes. They've also just recently released their superhuman AI tool, which will help you to write faster than ever before in your own voice and tone. Plus, there's also a huge amount of additional tools and features on top of those to go with. So to maximize your productivity when it comes to emails, try Superhuman free for a month using the first link down in the description below. Okay, from there we have Touch Simulator, which is an app that I do still use sometimes depending on the phone, and as such is definitely worthy of a place in this video. It essentially lets you set up automations for any repeated actions that you might find yourself performing within certain apps. And I quite often use this to help even further expedite the process of batch uninstalling apps once I'm finished testing them for any of these top Android apps videos. And whilst I don't still actively use Swipeify, I'm still a big fan of its UI and implementation. The gist of the app is that you connect your Spotify account and then swipe random songs right or left depending on whether you like them or not. And that then puts together a playlist for you in Spotify, thereby opening you up to songs that you may have never otherwise heard of. Really creative concept and execution. Bluetooth Volume Manager, on the other hand, is an app that I'm still actively using to this day. This is a super useful app that lets you set preset volume levels for different Bluetooth devices. And that means whenever I get in the car and my phone connects, I no longer miss out on 20 seconds of a podcast that I was listening to because the volume on my phone was set too low. Now the volume gets automatically set to the max as soon as the phone connects, which is amazing. Notification Simulator is also an app that I still have installed on all of my phones. Though I'll be honest, I rarely use it unless I need it for a video. The app essentially lets you emulate notifications from any app of your choosing, which I have used for a few videos this year. And I have to say the fake notifications do look super convincing. Like I said, I don't use it much, but when I need this functionality, this is the app that I'm using. After that is Charge Meter. And this is a really cool app that I discovered recently that lets you assess the performance of any charges you might own. And as someone with a huge ton of unnecessary charger bricks taking up valuable storage space in my house, this is an app that I'll be hanging on to for some time going forward to make sure I'm only keeping the very best quality ones. Then there's perhaps my favorite expense and budget tracker application in terms of design, which is called Cashew. It packs in just about all the features you'd want in this sort of an app, which will help you to stay on top of your spending. But then, like I said, the design is absolutely gorgeous and it's also packed to the brim with customization as well, which I love. I'm not actively using it right now, but if I was looking to use an expense manager application, this would probably be the one that I'd go for. All right, then we have Hail. And whilst a lot of phone manufacturers let you hide apps from the app drawer these days, there's still a bunch that don't. Looking at you, Google. Anyhow, given I've been using the Pixel 8 Pro of late, I was super stoked to stumble upon Hail, which lets me do exactly that. And it doesn't even require root access, just ADB permissions, which can be granted via Shizuku. Second to last is Dual Wallpaper. And this has now become my go-to application for setting up auto-changing wallpapers that match my phone's system theme. 
Up until recently, I always used an app called Darkinator to do the same thing, but unfortunately it stopped working with the release of Android 14. And so Dual Wallpaper has stepped up to the plate beautifully. It also offers a few extra features to go with, so definitely worth a look. And so last, but certainly not least, is Smart Spacer, an app that I just recently featured on the channel that takes Google's at a glance feature and increases its functionality tenfold. From adding unread counters to digital wellbeing stats to even tasker plugins, this app is seriously powerful. And the best part is that it does not require root access, only permissions to be granted via Shizuku. If you're a Pixel phone user, then you are gonna love this app. But that, my friends, is it. Those were my favorite apps out of all of the apps that I featured in 2023. You can find all of the links to the apps that I mentioned throughout the video down in the description below. And as always, let me know which apps were your top picks throughout the year. And who knows, maybe they'll be featured on the channel in 2024. If you enjoyed the video, then a sub to the channel would be amazing. But that's it. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.